Hey guys, before we get into the video, I just wanted to remind you guys to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and are enjoying the series. We are currently very close to our 70k goal and any help getting there is greatly appreciated. Even if you have subscribed already, just make sure that that's still the case as there have been some reports by other creators that there's a glitch going on where it might unsubscribe people who are already subscribed. Thanks guys, enjoy the video. In the previous battle of the Hoenn True Power Tournament, we saw a gym leader showdown as Winona of Fortree City took on Norman of Petalburg in an all-out strategic clash that showed just what the Hoenn gym leaders are capable of and that they can certainly match up with the best of them. Today, we've got a battle between Annabelle, the frontier brain of the Battle Tower, and Roxanne, the gym leader of the Rustboro City Gym. Let's head to the team previews to see what each trainer is working with. Annabelle arrives at the tournament with quite an offense-heavy team with threats like Lucario, Weavile, Salamence, and Alakazam, and a tankier Pokemon in Snorlax. One of her Pokemon is not registered in our database, but I'm sure we'll find out what's happening there as the match goes on. Roxanne, on the other hand, has quite a balanced team with offensive threats like Aerodactyl and Kabutops, and lots of tankier Pokemon with both offensive and defensive capabilities like Steelix, Cradilly, Armaldo, and Agron. Our producers are informing us that our trainers are ready to do battle, so let's head down to the arena for what is bound to be a thrilling match. It's time, we've got Roxanne, the gym leader of the Rustboro City Gym, versus Annabelle, the Battle Frontier Brain of the Battle Tower. Roxanne starting off the battle with her Steelix, a very defensive and offensive threat, really tanky Pokemon, whereas, oh, Annabelle starting the battle off with her Latios. Now, this is the secret Pokemon we could not find out about earlier. She does have access to a Legendary, but she is going to switch that out right away into the Salamence here. Realizing that Latios could not get much done against a defensive Steelix, especially if it's specially defensive. And here comes the Steelix with the Sandstorm. So Roxanne deciding to set up right away, perhaps anticipating the switch there. Realizing Latios was not a good matchup. But the Salamence coming in on Annabelle's side here. Roxanne is going to be forced to switch out. But into what is the question? The Aerodactyl. Aerodactyl is a great counter for Salamence. Especially if the Salamence went for something like the Flamethrower to try and take down the Steelix. Of course, Aerodactyl. Yes, the Flamethrower. Aerodactyl does have increased special defense under the Sandstorm. So that will do little to nothing, actually. Aerodactyl absolutely eating that up. And now Annabelle is forced to switch because Aerodactyl will outspeed that Salamence. No question about it. And into the Snorlax now. Snorlax is a defensive monster. Oh, and the Aerodactyl actually went for the Ice Fang there. That would have been four times effective on Salamence. It is a very good thing that Annabelle switched out. Now the Snorlax is on the field. It will get hurt by the Sandstorm, but it does look to have the Leftovers item, so it will recover basically any damage. It will mitigate the Sandstorm damage. And in comes the Steelix back out for Roxanne here. Now we've got a defensive battle going on, and the Snorlax taking the opportunity to go for the Curse here during the switch. A smart play there from Annabelle that will raise her attack and defense on the Snorlax. So all of a sudden, the Steelix will not be able to do as much damage. But Snorlax still getting hurt by that Sandstorm. Let's see what the Steelix is able to do here against Snorlax, especially with this increased defense. This will be an interesting play right here. Steelix going for the Toxic. Oh, that is a great play there from Roxanne. Making sure to get the Toxic off on the Snorlax. That's perhaps what she wanted because Snorlax is a very, very big defensive and offensive beast. But now it will be put on a timer with that Toxic. And in comes the Earthquake. Super effective Earthquake on the Steelix. Doing a good amount of damage after that curse, actually. Even despite how defensive Steelix is. Perhaps we'll be doing about a third after the leftovers. Yeah, right around a third damage. So it might be a three hit KO for this Snorlax. But Snorlax is going to start getting hurt by that poison. Of course, the Sandstorm has subsided here. It'll be interesting to see if Roxanne does want to send that up again. Yes, she does! Oh man, the Sandstorm coming out, realizing how valuable that is for her whole team. Just in case she does need to switch if Annabelle decides to pull a switch. But here comes the Fire Punch now on the Steelix, perhaps going for the burn there. But no burn on the Steelix, wanting to lower its attack. And Snorlax getting hurt again. So this really is a battle of attrition here, as both teams do have some methods of recovery. However, the Snorlax now is toxic, of course, and it does have the Sandstorm to contend with. So it's going to be taking more and more damage each turn. And it is quite a lot. But now Roxanne going... Oh, she's going to switch out from the Steelix here. And going into the Aerodactyl. Oh, perhaps anticipating the Earthquake here. If the Fire Punch lands and burns, that would be brutal. 
But no, the Snorlax did go for the Earthquake, perhaps realizing that Snorlax would have wanted to go for the KO there. So a brilliant switch there from Roxanne, making sure to go into something that could just be immune to the attack. And now Snorlax just takes more damage. So she is kind of toxic stalling. It'll be really, really cool to see if she does pull the double switch. No, she's going to go for the Rock Slide right away here. Rock Slide on the Snorlax, perhaps hoping for the flinch here. Not doing too, too much damage, but no. Oh, the Snorlax going for Body Slam now. That could paralyze. Let's see. No, no paralysis, it looks like, but the Sandstorm and the Toxic wearing down that Snorlax immensely. It might be within KO range now for the Aerodactyl. Let's see after this poison here. Oh, 41 HP, it is in the red. That looks like it could be in KO range. Aerodactyl going for the Earthquake. Now, Annabelle could have switched into something like the Salamence there, but again, the Aerodactyl would just outspeed it, and yes, that will be the end of the Snorlax. Snorlax putting in some good work there, definitely damaging Roxanne's team quite a lot but not able to survive much longer than that. And the Weavile coming out on the field now for Annabelle, perhaps hoping to go for that priority Ice Shard on the Aerodactyl, which would probably take it down from this range. So Roxanne is going to switch out into the Kabutops here. Kabutops will definitely eat up an Ice Shard pretty darn well. Yes, it is the Ice Shard. Let's see how much this does. Oh yeah, that is just chip damage for Kabutops. Absolutely eating that up. The Sandstorm will subside though, so Kabutops no longer has that special defense boost. Depending on what Annabelle sends in here, the Lucario is coming out. Oh, that is a big, big threat for Roxanne's team. The good thing is Roxanne's team does have a lot of physical defense, and the Stone Edge, oh, Lucario absolutely eating that up, even despite how powerful Kabutops can be. Oh, and the Lucario Knight has been activated. Mega Lucario making its presence known on the field here. Annabelle, this is one of Annabelle's ace Pokemon, that is for sure. The Kabutops going for the Aqua Jet here, Roxanne, knowing she can't switch out and not doing too much damage, realizing she just had to get the priority off, and the close combat taking down the Kabutops in one hit. Man, oh man, that thing is powerful. Now, it will get the defense and special defense drop here after the close combat, so that was a relatively okay move on Roxanne's part, keeping that Kabutops in. Not much else she could have done, making sure the Lucario went for close combat, and now the Meteor Mash, oh! Oh, Annabelle's perhaps hoping for the attack raise here. Oh, and that will be the end of Armaldo in one hit. Now, Armaldo is a relatively defensive Pokemon, too. So that is a little bit worrying here as Roxanne goes back into the Steelix. Now, Steelix is very heavily physically defensive, but I don't know, a close combat. Oh, no, the Steelix going down, too, to the close combat. Roxanne perhaps hoping that she could get the Earthquake off, which would have been a great play there. But no, even Steelix going down. This Lucario is on an absolute tear here. In comes the Cradilly. Now, Cradilly is another defensive Pokemon, but at this point, I'm not getting my hopes up. Lucario going for the Meteor Mash, wanting to get that attack raise yet again. Whoa! Even the Cradilly goes down. What are we witnessing right now? This is very reminiscent of the days of the Johto tournament back when Bugsy had his Mega Beedrill, of course. It was able to pull off sweeps like this. Lucario, now the Aggron. That will be four times effective. Oh, but the Aggron does have the Choppleberry, it looks like. Will it survive? No! Even the Aggron going down. Aggron does not appear to have the sturdy ability. Roxanne perhaps regretting that at this moment. It looks like it might have had the Rockhead ability instead of an offensive presence. Now, of course, Roxanne does have two Pokemon, I believe. The Sturdy Steelix and, of course, the Aerodactyl with Focus Sash. But again, that's not enough, it looks like. Lucario should be able to go for it. Yes, the Bullet Punch. The Priority Bullet Punch on the Aerodactyl. That should do it. Yes, the Aerodactyl going down. What a sweep this has been. Are you kidding me? What a sweep by the Mega Lucario Annabelle. Absolutely demonstrating some true power. That is for sure. Annabelle taking the battle with a massive lead. That Lucario absolutely sweeping the remnants of Roxanne's team. I kind of see her strategy now was to send out that Snorlax and do as much damage as possible on Roxanne's team just to set up for the Lucario. That was an impressive, impressive performance by Annabelle. Annabelle will be moving to the next round. Before we go, I'd just like to remind you guys to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, if you enjoyed the video. Huge thanks goes to our YouTube members and patrons on Patreon. If you want to support the channel and get some cool perks, the links to support will be in the description below. This has been Soul Spectre, and I'll see you guys next time for some more true power.